Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I am so excited to have on, again, a 30-year-old from Hammond, Ontario, Canada. His hockey journey has taken him to Canada, the USA, Czechia, Austria, Slovakia, Denmark, and looks like he has found a home in Sheffield, England. He returns to the shed after episode 234, has collected 797 goals, plays, or lessons. And now he has built a cult-like following with the first place Sheffield Steelers, who are running amok of the EIHL. And for fun, in just 27 games played, he is a plus 21. But he didn't just start letting people know what's up. Just last season with the Herning Blue Foxes, became a Pokal champion and a Danish silver medalist. Puke. And before that, nearly <laughs> won the Kelly Cup puke with the Toledo walleye. He has earned his way to muck it up in some of the top leagues in Europe and did his thing in the A and was an East Coast All-Star. But more importantly, he has been making memories for kids and making dreams come true for the kids around Sheffield, England. Welcome back to the shed, Kevin Tanzi. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. It's always a pleasure. Hey, great to have you back on, man. And, uh, what really inspired me, I don't know when I saw this picture, but um, you were just tossing a puck over the glass to a kid who had a sign saying, can I have a puck? It's my birthday. And I just love that stuff, you know? Yeah, right on, man. That's what it's all about. It's actually funny. I have a, I have an almost identical picture to that from my college days. It says, uh, it's a teddy bear toss game. And the sign says, um, this is a teddy bear toss game, but Kevin Tanji is not a teddy bear. <laughs> That's a good sign. Uh, fun yeah. signs are fun. <laughs> um, they but are like fun. that picture that I got of you throwing that. Do you see the kid's face in that photo? That's, oh, yeah. that, that's hockey. That's what it's all about. Yeah. That is hockey. And how we know each other, um, I get into is episode 234. That was last season, eh? Sure was, yeah. Yeah. So I guess I've really been cranking them out because this is like 350 something. <laughs> Oh, it smokes. Oh, boy. Keep going. Yeah. Got to put the pedal to the metal, right? But you were in Herning, Denmark, and uh, Small World, they just went back to my old honey hole, Cardiff, Wales, and uh, neither team won it. Um, my dog just let himself in the shed. Um, but uh, we got <laughs> Twix thrown on the ice again, not in Denmark this time, but back in Cardiff for Mac. When, when Herning beat Cardiff, they did throw Twix on the ice in Cardiff, Wales. Sorry about that, Cardiff. <laughs> Isn't that neat, though? That is cool. I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, Mac's uh, history there. I'm sure there were Twix thrown there for, for him back when he was in Cardiff. So um, That's how it know, started, man. We got her fired up in the shed, you know? And then yeah. that, that it, it continued on to Herning. It, like, came full circle that he went back to Cardiff. But he never got to play. Got injured the practice before the Continental Cup. What kind of horse yeah, manure heard. is that, eh? That's brutal, yeah. Like, five minutes on the practice, apparently, too. Just that is so brutal. Yeah. yeah. That is not, not fun. No injuries are the worst thing in hockey. You know, they, they are. Yeah. Like you don't get to be yourself and do what you want to do. And then like your day is so out of whack. Cause you gotta, you, you're not on the same schedule as your dudes and you hardly ever get to hang out with the boys. Cause you're going to physio and you're, you're not on the ice and you're not mucking it up. It's it's hard to be yourself when you're injured. eh? Uh, it's like prison, basically. Like you're just on a different schedule. You, you almost feel like you're not a part of the team if it's a long injury. It sucks. I mean, never, never fun being injured for a lot of reasons. Yeah, and um, well, I guess we would talked about this back in two thirty four. I remember discussing it, but you did have a major injury in your career way back when, right? And um, man, well, for the people that didn't hear about it, do you want to just give a quick background of your the, your big injury? Missed a whole year, right? Yeah. In college. Yeah, it actually wasn't hockey related. I just got jumped when I was downtown. Um, not even downtown. I was just going to my car. I uh, just got smacked in the back of the head. Uh, ended up in a coma for three days. Was Had a few ribs broken, broken shoulder, um, brain bleed, lost my sense of smell. And yeah, it took me a full year to recover. And you still like don't know who did it, why they did it, nothing, right? No idea. I mean, they took my phone. It's probably just like, just to get a some phone. guys who wanted to, yeah, I mean, I guess it was 
Blackberry too. I would have just given it to him. Yeah, crazy. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's uh, wild. But now, um, like since we've talked, we got a lot to discuss here. But you have headed to Sheffield, and um, with an injury like that in your past. Man, I've seen some photos and some videos of you mucking it up this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had a couple of squir- a couple of uh, a couple of hits, a couple of fights this year. A couple uh, of good goes. <laughs> fun is fun. Yes, yes. Uh, boys will be boys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, one of your poster picks was uh, you're squaring up with Dallas Earhart from my chocolatey Manchester Storm. Um, how'd that one go? Yeah, I mean, it was it was honestly, I mean, it was one of those ones where I stepped up and and hit one of his players pretty good, um, and, uh, and he in the last well game, for his team. Yeah, well, the last time we played them, one of their players hit uh, one of our top players, and I just like went over there and started fighting the guy like right away. I didn't really give him a choice. So um, after after that happened, uh, you know, he said, "Let's go," and I said, "Oh, I guess I sort of have to." Um, clean hit, big hit. Um, but then, yeah, it was, I mean, it wasn't, I mean, to say if it was a pillow fight was probably wrong. Like it was, uh, it was one of those ones that if you don't know a lot about fighting, you say it's probably a crappy fight, but it was like probably a good 30, 40 seconds of just like two guys, two big guys who know how to fight. And we being, both got a good a grab technical. on each other. Yeah. Being a bit technical yeah, exactly. about it. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Like we grabbed each other off the square off and I think we both realized that we both had a really good grab on the other. So it kind of like, it was more of a, of a jab fight. Um, just kind of like grabbing the shoulder pads and just giving those because I mean, you can usually tell if that guy has a good grab on you and you know, your grab too. So when we both felt that we had a good grab, it was kind of like, all right, this is going to have to be a little bit more technical. And he's, he's so long, like his, he's very tall and is, is, uh, I mean, I'm not used to fighting guys who are that much taller than me. I mean, I don't know if he's that much taller than me, but his length, like his arm reach is, uh, He's got a long, some long arms. Um, so I was trying to, I to always, open him up a little. I find it interesting talking to the fighters because, you know, I really did suck at it. I've tried it a few yeah. times. <laughs> I I usually would get beat up, but usually it'd be the top of my head getting them because I'd try and get under their armpit and just swing up and keep skating forward, you know, uh, because if, you know, if somebody wanted to have their way with me and stretched me out, I'd be in big trouble. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I usually like to stretch guys out, but I got stretched out pretty good. Um, and when, once he stretched me out, like the first couple punches I tried to throw, um, I threw him some jabs because I realized that he had like a good reach on me. Um, and then I tried to like come under with one, but I didn't even come close to touching his head. So that's so when I, I realized that I just tried to like turn him around. So I was just kind of like hitting his elbow with, with his grab hand and just trying to go over top of him, kind of twisting him around. But I mean, neither of us really landed any punches. I mean, it was a good technical fight, but I mean, um, we both came out of there unscathed. Well, it's been interesting for me to see your season go on from afar on my little device because uh, when they signed you, all of a sudden I got a bunch of hashtag shed guy. We signed a shed guy, everything, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, they they get it. They they know what a shed guy is. And um, oh, yeah. then you go there and absolutely deliver what we're talking about here in the shed. You are mucking it up. Um, you're throwing pucks to kids, and also I'm seeing pictures of you having fun coming to the arena. I saw a picture of you and that saucer man fellow who has a great name and a great beard. Uh, but you guys were gussied up for like Christmas and like outfits, right? Yeah. Um, I saw is, uh, he's kind of the reason whenever, whenever I've played with him, I grow out the beard. I usually grow it out, um, a good amount, but to this extent, I've only ever done this one other time. And it was when I was playing with him in Slovakia. Um, we're just kind of like the two redheaded beard guys. Um, but yeah, yeah. he, uh, that's cool though. He's that's always hockey. Been, oh yeah. He's, he's kind of been adamant of, uh, after hockey, he thinks he's going to probably try to be like a, a mall Santa. Um, during the season, just cause he's got, like, he's got such a great beard. Um, he does. and you know, he, he's got the full costume for Santa. So he got one and he said like, Hey, I'm going to come to Santa. And I said, Oh, I guess I'll get, I brought my buddy, the elf, uh, Christmas sweater. So I grabbed the hat, grabbed some, uh, I don't know what else I grabbed, grabbed some gloves or something. And yeah, just, uh, well, got I, there early, signed some autographs. That's some cool, man. I, uh, I love when guys, uh, aren't afraid to have a little fun and have a little personality. Um, 
I oh, did yeah. a few similar things, um, but I think fun is fun and happy hockey players play better. But that saucer man yep. guy, he looks like a hockey player in those photos. Like you two look like shed guys. I don't know him, but he looks, he screams shed guy to me. I'll introduce you to him. He'll, he'll definitely want to come on too. I'll introduce you to him for sure. Um, and you're both D men, both with huge beards, eh? Yes, sir. Cheapers. That could scare some young kids on the other teams. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the beard, the fear of the beard mentality is a thing, I think. it's. I don't really get it, but I mean, well, I, I, it is what to, it is. I used to get pretty nervous around guys with big beards. Yeah, I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. Um, but other ways we know each other is a shed guy that came on. And he's a Steelers fan. Um, Dylan Bath. I double tapped my uh, thing here. Do? I can hear. I you. can't hear you right now. Give me one second. Oh dear, technical talking... difficulties. Oh, uh, there you go. Sorry, I was talking to Siri for a second. Okay, you're back. Um, no, yeah. I had a I had a Steelers fan on. That's a Shed guy. Um, he had just he's never he had never played hockey. He'd only been a fan. He started ball hockey, and I had him on and chatted about it. And then the opposite of a Shed boost, he got injured like recently after playing ball hockey, broke his whole leg, and. Um, sure. He asked me if I could get him to get to meet you. Big fan. He's a big fan of you. And you're both shed guys. So, um, you know, people helping people. Hopefully we can set that up. You can sign something yeah. for him and meet him. Get a shed guy photo, Absolutely. right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and the other way we know each other is it's a small world and it's just me talking to my shed. But I, I've gotten a picture of Rich Bateman, a fellow I raised some money for that had a massive stroke that's a Steelers fan. Um and another guy biked 600 kilometers. But anyways, he was wearing a two ales and hockey tails jerseys at one of your games. And they take a photo and send it to me. And just happens that there's a number six tansy in the background. And I just think, man, this is a small world because it's taken all these guys oh, yeah. that have taken the time to come on and talk to me. Um, a lot of guys I didn't know. And now we're like a big shed family. And then I get a photo of a guy that we helped out talking in my shed in a jersey of mine in Sheffield, England. And there's one of my shed guys in the background on a fan's jersey, you know? <laughs> crazy, man. It's crazy how small the hockey world is. It is. Um, fun yeah. times. And uh, so small world stuff. Should we get into that then right away? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so you were in Kosice. Did you leave I before sure Dan Seaman came in? I did, yeah. Is he a coach or a player? He came in as the coach that season. Yeah, no, I uh, I left halfway through the season, and then the coach got fired like a month later, I think. Okay, so you missed him by a month because he small world was he's the coach I uh, that we won gold helmets together with in Denmark and oh, Sinderjuski, okay, cool. but he just won it with Kosice last season. He just won it. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Good for him. And he's a beauty. Um, other than he asked Love me to that. kindly leave, um, I had some hard feelings towards him for quite some time. You know, I'm yeah, over it now. Thanks. Makes you who you are. That's fair. Right? Sure is. Um, Saucer Man was on that team, too. He was, yeah. Yeah, Cheapers. we went over there together after Innsbruck. Um, we both got this offered. This is like uh, your third year together? Oh, yeah. He's, he's a good buddy of mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we meet him and It's fun when Champini. you can go one places with people, right? Yeah, so that's kind of how we all ended up in Sheffield was Dan Champini is also um, good buddies of ours. We all played together in Innsbruck. And Saucerman got married this summer and we were both at it. And we were just, we went to, uh, it was a, um, we went to Cancun for his wedding and we were all just drunk by the pool. Yes, and Champ was saying, be. like, hey, come, guys, come play in Sheffield, come play in Sheffield. And we're like, all right. So we both signed in Sheffield like a week later. And, and obviously he's got a good relationship with the coach if uh, he can just pull the trigger like that and get you fellas on board but your guys resumes speak for themselves hey eh? um you guys yeah. have quite the squad this year eh? <laughs> you guys are really yeah, doing right. her <laughs> yeah we've got we've got a pretty deep team it's kind of crazy like we we legitimately don't like when we're all healthy we don't have a first or a fourth line like we're just one two three four one two three four one two three four and i've played on teams before that's like that that we play one two three four one two three four but we shouldn't right but and like this year you gotta like, hide people yeah I, I yeah i mean but but we didn't um so that's happened in the past but this year it's literally like one one night our like first line on paper 
we'll go no points, but our second line will get two goals. Our third line will get no goals. Our fourth line will get two goals. Yeah. And the next night it's the first and the second. Then it's the second and the third. Well, that's just, how you win, man. Depth is every, yeah. everything I ever won. It was about depth. and It was about being a full team yeah. that you could put everybody out there. And when you're relying on a couple people, um, everybody can't have a good night every night and you need the other people to step up. And to be honest, that, your re- your record is about the same as my under 13 team I'm coaching this season. And um, <laughs> what you're saying is very similar to my team. I do have two horses that are big and strong and can do it all, but I, I can play everybody and I roll everybody and like everybody can play. And I just roll the three lines. Everybody can power play penalty kill. And um, it, yeah. it's how you win games, right? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like us, too. I think, like, pretty much everybody has played on the power play, except for maybe, like, a handful of guys this year at some point. Um, It's just, like, I mean, we have, like, we have our top point getters, but it's, like, in in five games, our top scorer could be a different guy, and then another five games, it could be a different guy. Like, it's it's wild, man. You look at, as a research team, you can look at a lot of squads, and – uh there's not many times you see a roster um, that has, I think it was like your 15th score had over 10 points. And I was like, after 27 games, that's not normal. <laughs> that's not normal no, at like, all. <laughs> we're averaging like just under five goals a game right now. It's, it's, <laughs> it's insane. Like we, guess you don't, we, we went on a, that, eh? <laughs> we, well, we went on a, I saw, I saw a tweet from a fan that we went on a 10 game winning streak where we won every game by at least three goals and the goal differential in that time we scored like 54 goals and let in like 12. that's living yeah hockey can be (laughs) hockey can be really fun when that's going on yeah it's 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 quite fun it's it's nice we're on uh right now i think we're at 14 in a row so okay well um on the flip note of that we were 12 and oh uh then we were in a tournament, won the first four games of it, or whatever, three. And then we get to the semis and lost, a heartbreaker. Uh, you know, we're the better team, but we lost the game and couldn't score. And then the everybody's been crushed. Everybody's been down and not been wanting to co- come to the rink as much. You can just tell they're, you know, they're not as joyful when they get there. And then we lost our next game. So then all of a sudden, we've lost two games in a row. And I'm like, how do I get the ship back on track? How do I get these boys having fun again? So... We're going to play the other first place team, the team that was 11 and one, and we were 12 and 0. And I said, if you guys win this game, you can shave my head in the room. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get a little extra motivation, you know, like getting chocolate thrown on the ice. I'm not allowed to do that in Sheffield anymore, but it sure was fun when we did it. Or else I'd ask you what your favorite <laughs> chocolate bar was, <clears throat> but I'm not allowed. Um, but anyways, <laughs> um, I, uh, the weather cancels our game so now we're not even playing them for like a month and i'm like geez now we've been sitting around not doing a lot since we've lost those two games and i thought i'd get some fun back so i let them shave my head anyways and they all took turns with the razor and passed it around and worked as a team to make the worst haircut of all time check this out so like oh geez like (laughs) they went right down the middle with the first strip my son did and you got uh, it (laughs) <laughs> well, and then they got, they've left long hair around my ears. Um, there's patches <laughs> everywhere. And uh, some of the kids missed the practice because of the weather. So I was like, well, I can't shave the rest off now because I got to make them a part of it. They can't feel that bad that they weren't there to do it. So I have left it since Sunday. I went to work yesterday um, like this. And you know what was interesting <laughs> for me being myself was that, um, Everybody loved my hair could do. Um, they loved there you how, go. they loved how awful it was. They thought it was funny and they said, Thanks for making work fun today. And I thought, geez, that's <laughs> neat. That's hockey, right? <laughs> Basically like David Beckham in the in the shed. Yeah, Change so, the haircut, maybe everyone's gonna get it. You know what? I don't think this is um <laughs> It, you couldn't duplicate this. You couldn't make this haircut twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, we have practice tonight. So then the other boys can see it, but I, nice. I, I want to keep it till Saturday and coach the game like this, you know, there you go. <laughs> just today, you know, <laughs> let the boys have a laugh and remember hockey yeah. is fun. Right. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. 
<laughs> but you guys don't have to worry about that. Your ship just keeps on cruising. <laughs> and so you had never done this UK thing before. Um, the league versus the playoffs. Um, it's totally different, isn't it? It is different. Um, it's, I mean, it's, I'm a fan of, of like football, soccer. Um, and I, I know that that's how like the English Premier League works. And uh, I kind of knew that going in. Um, definitely different. I'm, I am a fan of the best of seven kind of series just because you get to build all the hate and stuff. But I mean, haven't won, haven't won one in that kind of scenario. So, you know, maybe this is the way to, to be able to do that. It's a full year and uh, every game is basically a playoff, so you kind of like have to bring it every game. Can't really take any nights off. No, and that's it. It is. It's it's to, it's different because it's not one on one for seven games. Um, let's see who wins. But it's a, a lot about consistency and bringing it every night because you, yeah, you play some of the teams that you're supposed to beat on a Tuesday, Wednesday night, and it, it could be hard to get up for those games. But like those two two points mean the same as the big games, right? yeah exactly mm -hmm. um it is different but um so then i guess we haven't talked since last year you guys did go to the finals um which man playoff drives can be exhausting but you guys uh ended up losing a eh, in the finals with mac and the fox yeah. and blue foxes it was tough man we had like we just had nothing left in the tank we had we had so many injuries we had like three or four guys playing injured um the the ref in there was pretty insane um i got i got we won the semifinals obviously but there was a time where i was in the corner with a guy and i got knocked out for like two games because i got a concussion i was just in the corner with the guy and like video clear as day just shows him like go like that to my face and like concussion i had to miss two games guy got a two-minute penalty and that was it like didn't get kicked out of the game. Didn't get suspended after review. He ended up scoring the game winning goal in the next game too, which oh, pissed wow. me off. Just like playing two, missing two games, but no we ended shit. up beating them in seven. Um, but like the semifinals when we played uh, Aceberg, it was just like it was just a war. Like we just we just like beat the shit out of each other basically. Um, that was the semifinals, the, right? Yeah, like seven games in the semifinals. And meanwhile, Alberg had swept the semifinals, so they had just like been able yeah. to rest for for a week or so. Um, and Alberg, Alberg was a good team, but I mean, I think we were like six and one against them during the season. Like we had their number all season. Um, but what it, just what like it we takes were to get to the finals could be a thing. And yeah, having a seven oh, yeah. game like killing yourself man those are hard on the body um and yeah. one thing i saw was after you won that game seven did you see mac topless on the ice jumping into oh, the mac glass was topless on, mac, mac was topless on the ice all the time <laughs> <laughs> if you got it flaunt it right yeah exactly no that, that was pretty uh par for the course for him yeah it was definitely it was definitely good going and winning that game seven um but it was just like we were playing with like like one and a half lines basically of guys who weren't hurt like the rest were all like had a couple like one guy had to have surgery on his elbow another guy like um yeah. or on his wrist or something like there was there was like a bunch of guys who had to take significant amount of time off after season and sometimes you can feel it too when like you, your team is out of gas like in the coast yeah. uh we went to the finals with the daytona beach bombers of ohio uh nobody expected that one and um it took us a game seven against Cincinnati, a game seven against Florida to make it to the finals. And then we win the first game of the finals and our goalie was cooked from injuries. Um, and everybody just ran out of gas, man. And we were like, like we didn't have it anymore. And you felt it. And the other team won four games in a row. And that was that. Yeah. That was kind of like us. We like, we battled. Um, I think we dropped the first two games. And then we won one, and then it went three one, and then it went three two, and they went in, in game six. I think it was just like, like the thing is that we we beat Alberg because we would like beat them up. They were a skilled team. We were like a right. a tough team and skilled team, but we just had no toughness left because we had like, like yeah. I said, like three or oh, four when guys. You, when you with play like, injured, when you play injured, like it's man throwing those hits and mucking it up like you normally can, like. It, 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 if you're injured, it hurts too much and you can't do it like you want to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. Um, yeah, that, uh, that's too bad, but you guys did win the Pokal. That would have been fun, eh? 
Yeah, it was fun. That was definitely fun. I mean, just a four or two, four game series, I guess, two game series. Um, I actually didn't even know how big of a deal it was going to be kind of thing. Like when we won, I mean, I was sort of expecting it to be like, all right, like right on, we won. And then like guys are like shedding their gloves, shedding their helmets and jumping up. And I see the trophies as big as me. And I'm like, holy Christ. All right. Like, let's go. Let's have a fun time. Well, um, it, realistically, we had, it's the same as winning the, any other trophy. It's like you had to beat every other team to yeah. win that thing, right? Yeah, it was, that bus ride home was hilarious. Our <laughs> our bus driver was not happy. We did a bunch of damage to the bus, just like drunk. And like, you know how Danish guys are after they drink. They're, well, they're, yeah. they're a riot. Um, yeah. we, we were like, we had the speaker on the bus. And we were like punching the tops of the thing, just like to the oh, beat. Yeah. Our, our captain like... <laughs> broke open the emergency like exit thing on the roof mm -hmm. and he was like out on the highway with the trophy like we were holding him by his feet he was out with the trophy on the highway like that's like this. living that's it was, that's it living. was hilarious man yeah it was a good time um that winning is fun and uh stories that happen nice. after are as hockey as it gets <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah. exactly uh, i uh my the way i can relate is we went to the Pokal final the year I was in Denmark um, and played the Herning Blue Foxes in Voyance, Denmark, in our home barn. And we lost 5 nothing for that. And they celebrated on our ice um, after smashing us in the final. And it was, it sucked. It was awful. And they must yeah. have fun that night too. But then we meet them in the finals, in the playoffs. And uh, we come to game seven in the same arena as the Pokal final. And we pulled out game seven. Uh, we were up four nothing going in the third and it ended four two. And, you know, we got to do her and it was fun. Um, and, but Herring's like on my team. Thing with us. <laughs> yeah, it was Alberg, Alberg and Alberg for us. We beat them in the Pokal final and then lost and them in the final. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's interesting. It's, you know, that's, you guys have a squad and um, like that grand slam's a thing. Um, I saw you guys were rolling through the challenge cup pretty well. Um, but it is very similar, the Challenge Cup and the Pokal in Denmark, and then trying to win the league and the playoffs. Like that you get it's like you gotta keep enough steam in the engine the whole way through, right? Yeah, I mean that's you know, you wanna you try to win all the trophies this year. Um we're you I know in the semifinals all, all of, time, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Semifinals of, of the, the challenge cup. So we played um, in that. We got Coventry. Okay. So tough building to play in. They got some of the top scorers in the league. Um, we've done well against them so far this year, but, you know, they're a team that can easily put four or five goals in the net. So uh, it's it's not something that we can take easily. It's We know that they've got, you know, some of the more talented players in the league. Um, Danny Cristo is a top player. They've got a, a good goalie, some good defensemen. So, um, you know, we're, we're ready. We're preparing for it. We're, you know, happy that we're in a – a good a good mood right now everyone's loving hockey being on a 14 game heater but um that, we know that loving hockey just gotta makes, keep going yeah it can make you have a little more juice in your step when you're skating around and a little more th oomph in your shot you know like when you're really yeah. loving it and that's what i found with these under 13s man they're like they're like you see the hockey so blatantly like when they're up, they're so up. And when they're down, they're so down. And it's like, how do I keep you up here? And how do I not let you get down there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 60 minutes determines your joy for the day or night. You know? <laughs> it does. How you walk around town, how the food tastes after. But um, oh yeah, one thing I also noticed, um, well, I don't know your coach, but I did see you post one day, I would go through a wall for this guy. And I always say what I would try to do with my boys is, I want them to that feel that way about me. But when you post something like that and then your team is playing the way they do, I mean, that coach has you guys bought in and you guys, you guys are on his team, eh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he gets us, you know, like if I've had some coaches that really don't get guys and then I've got coaches, I've had coaches that really do get guys and he's one of those, um, you know, he just lets us be ourselves, understands how each player is, how they need to be kind of talked to um and you know keeps us really accountable which is like the biggest thing is you know when you when you go on streaks like we've been going on this year it's easy to just kind of let things go here let things go there but he doesn't do that you know he, he makes us maintain like a certain level of you know honest respect for the game um 
work ethic, that kind of stuff. And he's also just a great guy too. So and all that stuff my, together my, is. Just... And I was trying to do this on our heater too. I'm just curious if he did this. I would tinker with my lines just to keep things fresh, just so they wouldn't get complacent. I would tinker with stiff stuff just so that they didn't get too relaxed, you know? Yeah, we've got we've got a couple lines that have been tinkered with. Uh, we have one line that's like lights out that we're just not touching because yeah. the the well, I guess Brett Newman's been injured for a few games now, so it has been touched. But the Watling, Usula, and Newman line has just been like insane when one, when like one they, guy zigs the other guy zags <laughs> uh, it's like they, they go out there and it's just spin cycle in the offensive zone for three for like a minute and a half like it's just like every time they're out there you're not in your d zone like it's they want like they're just so fast and so skilled that line that like they just take over games um and your assistant coach is carter best and will he's been to the shed before he's a beauty <laughs> Oh, as, is he a shed guy? I didn't know yeah, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I have one of the funnier pictures that I've, I have, I have a lot of funny pictures from my journey in the shed. But uh, after a game in Manchester with the Sheffield had lost, and they threw the chocolate. There's a picture of him with a chocolate bar in his hand, walking off the ice, like giving the game <laughs> face to the people in the crowd, and it's so funny. <laughs> Hey, you're going to get your chocolate either way, you know? <laughs> well, you got to earn it is the way I put it. I, I thought fair. it was hilarious, though. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want to see the chocolate on the ice. I'd probably stomp on it if I was on the other side. <laughs> I do love chocolate, so I mean, I'd probably just grab one and still be pissed off. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get in trouble, or I, I would ask you what your favorite chocolate bear was, but we went down so the path. Uh, but we went down the path with Sheffield, and it, did, it, it was a really fun night, but it uh, was – it was – canceled after that because the arena staff complained too much of the mess um but i think fun is fun mm -hmm. so um the other thing i got to bring up uh we'll just stick with sheffield for now anyways because you know we probably talked a lot about the other stuff last time your goalie takes goalies to win championships his stats are outrageous one six three goals against and a nine three five save percentage and i know you guys haven't lost really any games yet <laughs> he's good man he's he's a rock back there you know it's nice having two two years in a row like obviously having mac last year and now greenfield this year of just rock goalies back there like he's we know that like if we start a game slow or something like he's gonna have our back like we're we're never worried with when he's in the nets and then you know even our even our like backup goalie um tony maroney is like he's lights out too. Like we just have two goalies that are incredible. Um, and just like, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're poised. They're, they're cool. They're, I mean, they're actually normal people for goalies, which is something that you're not used to see. Yeah, that's um, different. But yeah, no, it's, 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 uh, both of those guys, um, they're just rocks back there. And like, we, we know that, you know, I like honestly all year between the two of them, I'd say that there's maybe like four, maybe five goals that you are like, eh, he probably should have had that. Like the rest of them that go in are just like, yep, you're not going to save that. Like it's, yeah. that was a nice goal. Like it's, yeah. you just, they don't miss. They're, and they're, yeah, wild. they're, the, yeah. And though the, the deflating ones are the, for a team um, are the ones where they go in and everybody kind of looks at each other. Like we've been working this hard and like that went in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, no, they're both lights out. Well, that's awesome. Um, okay, poster picks. Um, let's see here. Um, it, it looks like it's during a national anthem, black and white one. You got your game face on. You know, when I retired from hockey and I came back and I wasn't part of the game, and I remember the first time I, I was at a friend's house and they put on a Leaf game and O Canada's playing, and you they go around and you see everybody's faces during the national anthem and everybody is so ready to play hockey and it's guys have their eyes shut guys are staring at each other i remember in the uk we both teams would be lined up on the blue line and we'd all just be staring at each other like mean mugging each other <laughs> and it, it it would give you like the chills on the back of your neck like we are going to go out there and do this and i could see that's what was going through your head <laughs> you know yeah, I like to psych myself up during the national anthem for sure. Um, one thing that I always tell myself is I just kind of, I mean, I guess depending on where I'm playing, but in a place like Sheffield, um, you know, where you play in front of 7,000 fans every night, um, I just look around and I just kind of 
think to myself, like, damn, I'm lucky to be able to be doing this. You know, I've been doing this for eight years now and just having a chance to be able to be, um, you know, someone in, in the performance arts, basically, um, sort of like a, a modern day type gladiator, if you will. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's just kind of the feeling of the feeling that gets me psyched up is like, okay, what am I going to do to bring all of these people to their feet tonight and cheer? You know, like that's, that's kind of what goes through my game. And I get this, that's I get this kind of, I get, yeah, I get this kind of twitch, you know, twitches like that goes on that I can turn on and off a little bit where uh, I'm not so smiley like this and friendly kind of thing. I'm a little bit more of a, a little bit more mean. Um, And that's usually when I kind of flip that on sort of thing. Just kind of like, all right, who's, who's it going to be tonight? (laughs) Uh, That's cool though. And uh, I do have it written down as like, man, Sheffield does have, a huge following. They have a way bigger following than pretty well everyone else in the league. And you don't even realize it until you see like a photo of that barn when it's full from the top of it. And you see how many seats there are and you see they're all full. And um, it, it it is a pretty amazing uh, fan base you guys have. It's crazy, man. Like it's, it's insane. Like champ Champini had told me like kind of told us about it in the summer um about how wild the fans are about the team and the hockey but like I never really pictured it I mean I played in Toledo before so I kind of got the gist of sort of like a a minor pro team and and the fans but like I've been recognized and taken pictures and signed autographs at like grocery stores or like restaurants or like stuff like that like I was at my Costco um at the beginning of the year and this is like three or four games in like I'm not really people don't really know me at this point kind of thing. And the, like the clerk who's checking me out, um, she's like, Oh, I'm a huge Steeler fan. Like, you know, I like, can't take a picture with you. And I'm just like, just caught off guard. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, sure. Like it's, it's great. You're like a, you're like a small local celebrity here. Like it's, it's nuts. It, 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 it is neat. And um, yeah. what I found going to the UK, I, I couldn't believe the passion um, the fans have. Yeah. Um, like they, you are like your, their NHL st- are there and um they do yeah. want to take pictures and get everything signed and it is really neat that like they, they care about you and they're nice to you you know sometimes the teams yeah. can lose and the keyboard warriors come out but like when you're winning and it's a hockey family man there is no better league to be in in the world and the neatest thing for me that ever happened like you're talking about was i had been retired for f- a long, a long time, like seven years, six years. I went over for Matthew Myers testimonial um, a couple years after I'd been over for my night and I get to his place. Um, and then we just go grab a few groceries and I think we were grabbing beers actually, but we get to the <laughs> grocery groceries. store parking lot. And as soon as I got to the car, I just get back to Wales. And as soon as I get out, someone's like, Hey Wally. I'm like, what? <laughs> and even my Z was crazy. like, Holy moly, man, you already got recognized. You just got here. And I was like, oh, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> it's wild, man. It's it's crazy. It's so cool. Like it's it is and this cool. is this is the first year that um my girlfriend's been over here and she's just kind of like, I mean, we've been dating for a bit now and like she knew I play hockey. She came to Denmark a couple of times last year for um like a couple of weeks. And then when she got here this year, she's just like, Holy smokes, like like this is pretty nuts. It's like yeah, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you guys, uh, yeah. man. Yeah, you guys got a you guys got a squad and a fan base. Um, so yeah. that would that would be fun. So another guy, you know, who's my leading scorer in the shed. The top two episodes ever. David Sims doesn't even, okay. even played hockey. Yeah, I mean, he's it's Simsy. You know, he's. <laughs> You know who he is. He's, oh, he's, uh, a, he's, he's a dandy. He's, and uh, you know yeah. what? It's, you know, like he does the announcing when you guys come on and like yeah. the way he announces players, like the, his voice and the way he does it, man, like it, he, he gets you going. Yeah. He's got quite the voice for it. Um, you never really know if it's funny. Cause like we're, we're in the, the pregame kind of, um, you know, clocks ticking down and you're, you're in the locker room and someone comes in and yells five minutes and then, 
you go out there with like three minutes left and it's not three minutes. It's actually seven minutes because Simsy is just going like acapella on the, on the <laughs> fans. Right right like, right. <laughs> Simsy is going off again. Like. <laughs> oh, but he's passionate. He's passionate about his oh, yeah. Steelers. <laughs> yeah, he sure is. Yeah. Um, are you still doing your side gig? Um, not so much anymore. Um, sort of wanted to take a little bit of a step back. Uh, just kind of, you know, being, being 30, um, last year was a pretty big, uh, adjustment for me, just working for it. Um, I'm still doing it a little bit, but not taking as much time out of my day for it just because I want to enjoy the last few years of hockey that I got left. Um, just the work in the work in nine to five kind of thing when it's nine to five, but really it's like noon to eight because of the time difference kind of thing. Yeah. Um, took a lot out of me last year, so I, I kind of took a little bit of. And a you got to have your juice for the games, right? Like that is, yeah, that's exactly. You're paying you to be ready for those games, right? Yeah, like I'm still, I'm still working in it in some capacity, but just not really. No, it's definitely like a part part time job now. Yeah, no, that it was yeah. cool. It's cool what you're doing, though. If you want to shout it out, that's up to you. But um, yeah, I mean, people people who who listen, I think know already. I've sold quite a bit over here. I've just been get in i've been just like an individual salesman here basically i just order a bunch of wholesale of uh the impact of cbd the company that i started three years ago which uh is just kind of an effort to get athletes off of opioids and kind of you know painkillers kind of thing just a more natural way to recover um but yeah it's it's it, it was a fun ride um just got a little bit too much of a, a desk job for me which not exactly my cup of you're tea, losing, especially when yeah, I'm still you're you're losing the passion for for it when you're sitting there thinking it's like yes, the desk job, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But speaking of the painkillers, man, like ah, uh, it's you know obviously a soft spot for me. I think we talked about it last time um, with my yeah. knee. Um, I got off of it um, using you know cannabis and CBD and all that, um, yeah. and it changed my life. And I'm a big advocate for it all. Um, but like, I know more stuff in my shed than I let on. There's a lot of after hours chats. There's a lot of people telling me what really goes on with their teams. And I know what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not, but I did hear of a fella that he's on prescription painkillers and he's on them until this season comes to an end. And, um, that's tough to hear because people get addicted. They get reliant on it. And, um, yeah. I personally think that it was like the UK, man, they suspended a guy that was on the Steelers for using cannabis. And it's like, you should be telling them to use it so that they're not using painkillers. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, and like everyone's on board with it, except for the actual IHF. Like it's like it's crazy. All of our, all of our trainers are telling us like, like every team's trainers tell you, tell us like. Yeah, believe me, we wish you could, we could just give you, you know, like a, a 10 milligram edible for this or, you know, yeah. like go, go smoke a joint after a game. But it's, it's, I mean, it's, well, and you know, like it's, even it's, when, it's even when the, my old ass was still playing hockey, the trainers were telling us, I would rather you use that than drink alcohol because alcohol absolutely. doesn't help your muscles. It makes you fatter. It makes you slower. That stuff doesn't, and it grows out of the ground. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, like that's, and that's how like, you know, I'd say 75% of hockey players are, they'd rather just, you know, instead of, you know, drinking 12 beers and staying out till three, four in the morning at a bar, just have a couple of beers, smoke a joint, Relax. eat three bags, eat three bags of chips and watch a movie kind of thing, you know, like powwow around with the guys. It's, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's better for you. It's more fun for me. I mean, just can't do it here, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, it's silly. Silliness. Yeah. Um, okay, anyways, what are your poster picks? You're cooking. I love cooking. Um, and you are you got the ladle, you're trying it, and you're cooking with someone. What's that about? You making soup? That's yeah, that's actually um that's actually a place it's we're not actually cooking in that. It's more like a, a, a picture thing. Um we went to Chatsworth for the Christmas markets and that's me and Saucerman and we had like there was just like this thing. And there, Chatsworth is like this big, sort of castle-y type compound um, where I think like a Dutch and Duchess live or something here. And they do a big Christmas market, and you can tour through it during uh, during that time. And uh, 
we just saw that and thought, you know, hey, let's yeah, let's yeah. take some funny pictures. Let's have fun. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> fun is fun. <laughs> it um, is. Christmas markets are awesome. Again, huh? hey? I gotcha. My my headphones don't fit right in my ear, so I have to keep adjusting them. And every now and then, uh, I, I double mean, tap it, and the it comes top. on. <laughs> you can't double tap. <laughs> I'm, not um, I'm not a technology guy, man. I'm not a technology I, guy. I, I understand that, man. This whole like. Yeah. It, for me, I find it interesting doing this and how many people have listened because I really don't know what I'm doing on social media. I, I, Fair I you know, I, I just rely on people talking to people and then, uh, you know, you guys All sharing those. it when I have people on and they share it. It's like, okay, they, you know, people helping people. There you go. It's out there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, what I was saying was Christmas markets are awesome. Have you ever been to German ones? Cause I, they were, th they were the best. No, I haven't. We went to uh, we went to York, we went to Manchester, and we went to uh, the Chatsworth ones. They're pretty good. It's interesting how they're all like different in different countries too. Like yeah. this was like the Christmas markets here. I found were like a little bit less Christmas and just like just a bunch of shops selling their stuff kind so, of thing, yeah. and not so much Christmas. Not so much about Austria, the mixing it up, having drinks and food, and and everybody's yeah. sitting around being merry. <laughs> yeah austria was like was like that austria was cool like we went to vienna my first year over here um and that was like you know like christmas ornaments like glue wine like all kinds of just yeah. christmasy stuff whereas here it's a little bit like you know there's christmas trees and stuff but it's more just like all right this place is selling t-shirts this and place is selling purses snowy like, there right like you guys are not oh we, we've gotten snow it's snowed twice here and neither time has it stayed on the, on the ground I don't want to talk about it. My kids haven't been to school like at all this week, man. They're home again today. Yeah. It's driving me crazy. Yeah. We, the hockey's <laughs> probably get canceled again tonight, and I'm going to lose my mind. You know, I'll bored. That's why you're in the shed, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyways, um, the coolest, one of the coolest ones I ever went to was right by Hellbrand, Germany. I think the name was like Esslingen or something, but they had a medieval um, Christmas market. And like the town was really old, but then like, you had to pay with like these coins you got, like it was medieval times, and it was so cool, dude. Cool. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, it was fun. Um, and fun is fun. Anyways, moving on. Um, let's see here. One of your poster picks: Big Sally down on one knee, old fist, old school fist bump on one knee, or what's it called? I, I don't know. It's not fist. Yeah, it's just I don't know. Just uh, kind of what's that called? Doing We're, something cool. You know, like pulling pulling yeah. the, the motor, pulling the string. One of those. <laughs> you know? one of those. <laughs> yeah, guy. <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah, like that your is, trademark? Uh, do you have like a or do you got to feel the game and how big of a goal it is? I honestly like. I just kind of black out when I score. Like it's okay. again, it's like one of the reasons why I still do it. Um, you know, like I said earlier, bringing all those people to their feet when you get to score a goal. It's just kind of the time where. You have to do something, and I just kind of like – I never really have a plan. I, I don't have a consistent Sally. I just kind of get super duper happy and have yeah. lots of fun. And scoring is kind fun. Of do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, scoring is fun. Winning is fun. <laughs> Losing sucks. Um, but yeah, that's what's interesting for me when I'm on the side of the game, and I just like watch it all, and I'm just trying to learn stuff. But like – when the pictures you get sent, because I get a lot of pictures sent for posters, the team that's scoring is really happy. And the, the faces and the joy, it's like, man, you don't get to experience that in many jobs. Many things in life will never bring you as much joy as scoring a goal in front of thousands of people with your best friends on the ice, right? And uh, true, also yeah. winning, winning a trophy, right? And it's like you see the pictures of a team with a trophy and you're like, you guys like will never be that happy again. <laughs> yeah, that's. What, I mean, it's it's true. It's it's like I said. It's the reason why I still do it, right? It's the reason why I risk taking punches in the face. Is it's the reason why I've broken bones and dislocated stuff and had surgeries and stitches. It's just like yeah. keep coming back to that feeling. Yeah, I get it. I went as long as I could, and then I got. Yeah right fat and depressed when I was completely out of it and it was not part of my life and you know these kids have really brought me back um I have everything awesome. I need um I get the juices flowing before games I get to see the joy in all my boys faces I get to teach them how to hockey and be teammates 
And then when you see it all coming together or you teach them something and then they do it and you're like, gosh, this is living, you know? Yeah. There you go. Right yeah. on. So anyways, um, I did figure out you don't have to play to participate. It's like when the chocolate gets thrown on the ice in the UK, right? I'm still participating. I'm just not <laughs> playing. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, another small world shed guy that I had year one, you go to Orly Genajmo. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, you played with uh, another shed guy that's been on who was referred to from Carl Hudson, you know, and I'll always take that guy's word. Um, Rob Fleck. Yep. Yeah. He yeah. Was there. With, uh, Looks like Flicky. he's making a comeback again. He wasn't playing this year, and it says he's on a team in France's roster now. So, okay, nice. Yeah. I, I haven't kept him much in, in touch with him too much. He kind of came. He stays. I was only grid, with dude. him for. I don't even know if he's got a yeah. phone. <laughs> that's that's probably true. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's definitely one of those guys. But he, I didn't spend too much time with him because that season, he came in late and I left early because I uh, I dislocated my shoulder that year and I was done for the season. So they needed a D man. They needed the import spot. So they just paid out my contract. Right. So we were only together for about a month. But yeah, he's okay. a good guy. He's he's works his bag off too so um and that's in the abel that was where is that team slovakia no check it's it's in like the second czech league now that team's all over the place it's okay wild 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 east i got you um I, here's a random question because i love food where's your favorite place to eat in sheffield and who where, where if you could have a meal you've had or a restaurant you could go to through your travels in Europe, where would that be? What was your favorite restaurant so far? Because you've been to Czechia, cool. Austria. Um, where else did you go there? Slovakia. And uh, yeah, where would you go back for a meal? And has there been anything that's tickled your fancy in Sheffield? Yeah, so in Sheffield, I got to give a shout out to my uh, two places. Um, first and foremost, Tucci. Um, it's, uh, these, these, uh, guys who came over from Italy a few years ago, best sandwiches you'll ever have, uh, just incredible. They're like this, it's like this real family, like place, small, like the guy, every person who comes in, he greets you with a smile and like a handshake or a hug, like, and he remembers you the next time. Oh oh yeah. Every single, I, I go back there probably once a week for a sandwich, like just just like makes you feel at home. Um, yeah. They they came over here like three or four years ago. Uh, three more or two more in in the the pat the time just because you know like it's they're so friendly and the, their sandwiches are so good like it oh, best yeah. sandwich I've ever had. Um, Stop it. And then there's there's Lucky Fox too, which is like a it's like this fried chicken sandwich place, and they have. Oh probably the best french fries well maybe not the best french fries but top three or four french fries i've ever tasted so those are keepers those two places are they're more lunch places too but they're they're pretty lights out um uh, well the place you were talking about the italian place first there um the sandwiches is like that brought back a lot of memories because pretty well every town i went to i had like my restaurants where like i knew the guy the the italian guy yeah. that owned it that made the food that did it all and like you'd become friends with them and it did it made it feel oh, yeah. like home right like those restaurants those people can make a town when you're traveling around the world playing hockey those are the people you meet outside of the game that really can make it feel like home right yeah absolutely make it feel like a community um you know like whenever you go in there he's not just like hey like nice to see you it's like hey how's it going you guys won last game saw you got a goal two games ago like like yeah. how's your family doing how's this going like it's yeah. he's just you know he's just like a salt of the earth kind of guy and it's him and his brother that run it and they're both just they're both just awesome like oh, awesome nice. people fun people doing fun things <laughs> i totally yeah. get it yeah there is a couple places beating high man like there's one place where he'd lock up and we would stay <laughs> guitars yeah. would come out i could play them but i could listen <laughs> you know and it yeah, would be fair fun enough. yeah <laughs> yeah uh um but and then yeah so what about i guess in europe uh we went to this i can't remember what it was called um but we went up like a mountain 
Um, and I don't even know if it was called anything. Um, it was like we, there was, I was in Innsbruck, but Innsbruck's like right on the corner or on the, the, the uh, border of Italy. So it was actually in Italy too. Um, and Champini, who's Italian, he like said like, this is like a, a place that's kind of like not known. Um, and we're like, all right, sure. Like we'll go, we get in our car, we drive and then we keep driving. And then we like start going up this mountain and we're like all following the GPS in the car. And then at a certain point, the GPS is just like showing that like we're You're driving not on nothing. Like this isn't, this isn't a road anymore. And we're just like championing, like, where have you brought us? Like we're lost. We're lost. It's like, no, no, it's just like, just trust. Like it's, let's keep going. Like I heard it's, it's a really good spot. We went up to this place that's like, I don't know, had like 10, 15 tables maybe um, and had more for, uh, outside for the summers, but it was like half of a restaurant and half of their home. And it was just like home cooked Italian food, um, wine from the barrel off, like off Sounds the side incredible. of a mountain kind of thing. Oh, it was so good. I don't remember what it was called, but Pro probably, was... probably lunch with a view too. Eh? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. It was incredible. And then we like walk up more and it's like walk up to the peak and there's like all these like beautiful views, like cows, there's a bar up there. Like just, Oh, it was, it was awesome. It was really cool. It's some of the places you can see from playing hockey um, is neat. Um, especially like huh? once you've been back for like eight years and you're like, shit i haven't gone anywhere in a long time i used to do a lot of stuff <laughs> yeah You'd be in a different country every other day pretty much yeah and that's yeah, a couple of those leagues really you can <laughs> yeah go a lot of places um okay another small world one for you let's see here you went to clarkson university for four years my college oh. coach that uh at, right because you were out that one year um yeah. But uh, my college coach, the guy that recruited me, the shed guy, um, he is now the assistant coach there, Chris Brooks. Uh, oh, really? Okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, I I know one of the Clarkson coaches. He's a shed guy. Um, and we actually even exchanged some information about some upcoming puppies. And it's it's pretty neat to feel part of the game and help, you know, when you're one of those kids that want a scholarship so bad and um, you don't really understand how the whole game works. And now that you're at the other side and you're like, well, this is how it works. They ask people that are local that they trust if they should yep. come watch what the background is, what type of person he is. And it's mainly the question is what type of person is he is because they can see you play hockey, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a cool aspect. It's something that I might want to go into after I'm done playing is coaching that that type of level. I'm not really sure yet what I want to do, but I think it's – Something with staying in the game. I, I, shed guys should be in the game. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I missed it, but like to see how many of my friends are coaching and are in the game and are doing exceptionally well. It is really neat that they were my buddies when I was playing. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but here's a sad one for you. This, this is my personal stuff. I'm gonna bore you again with my minor hockey. Um, <laughs> we're the Concord and Canucks. Um, and I'm very proud. It's this town and it's the puppies I've been raising. They just decided uh, we're amalgamating. This is the last year of the Concord and Canucks. Oh, no. We're joining two other towns next season and making it a bigger center. And um, they'll have to come up with a new name, a new brand, everything. Holy moly, my horse and my puppies <laughs> are here. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Say hi to Kevin Tansy. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> How you doing, boys? I like the haircut that you gave your dad. Get a move over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sam, you gotta get in. Say hi. This is my horse. He's my there captain, and my leader. <laughs> awesome. Love that. <laughs> We're just about to get the team. Uh, we just came here to attack. bug me. Okay. I'm almost done. We'll meet just you in there. Guys. Bunch of punks trying to distract me in the middle of my show, right? <laughs> 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 um they should go to school that's what they should do kids are supposed to go yeah. to school right that's true you no know, i guess it's school time yeah snow day you said eh? yeah um yeah my kids in bare feet and it's a snow day what's he doing Idiot. any any outdoor rinks around there well it, it like just snapped and got cold like yeah. the last week or two and no there man it was like past christmas and like there's no snow nothing and it's like <laughs> 
whoever thought of building a rink, man, you really wasted your time. And now all of a sudden it's, yeah. it's here. <laughs> Winter's here. Yeah. I just <laughs> got my, uh, I just got this. This is my outdoor rink growing up, like net here. Shut and up. You got a new it. tattoo of your outdoor rink when you were a kid. Oh, I got, I got this whole arm done this year here, but yeah, it's uh, I've never seen a tattoo rink. of the outdoor rink of uh, as a kid. And then you become a professional hockey player. That's neat. Oh, there's, there's me closing the gap right there. Puck right here. Close, <laughs> yeah. Closing stick the gap stick right on there. puck. Close the gap. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we had, uh, we, me and my old man and my brother, well, mostly my old man, but you know, we, my brother and I helped where we could, we had, a. Uh, we had a 60 foot by a hundred foot boarded end rink in our backyard. It was, it was awesome. All my pro career to that for sure. Um, what's weird for me is I, uh, well, I can find outdoor rinks anywhere around here. There's farmer's fields, there's rivers, there's lakes, there's ditches. I've used all of them with my son, but, uh, Right before I thought of this podcast, right before I thought of doing her, I had a little rink outside the shed. And the shed is like a year-round resort, um, but it was a hockey rink right before I thought of the podcast. But the problem is I'm on too big of an angle that, man, I wanted it bigger, but I couldn't believe how big of a slope I had in my backyard. Like, the one corner of the rink was, like, over a foot deep, and the other end had, like, I was on the tarp, man. It was like nothing. It was it was a yeah, brutal tough. little tiny square of a rink. And I don't do it anymore because it'd be too small. But before that, a neighbor down the road had a tennis court. And we would split. The, I would do the work, really. But we had it at his place. And then on weekends, you get the whole neighborhood around. Everybody skating. And it's like, yeah. man, this is as hockey as it gets. Oh, yeah. That was that was us, man. It was like every team party was at our place. Uh, my birthday party was basically just... It wasn't even a birthday party. It was a hockey party. Just come over. There'll be cake. There'll be food, and just go play hockey for five hours, kind of thing. Like that's all I did in the winter. Like I spent. I would come home from school, do the whatever amount of homework I did, kind of like right away, or just not do it. Um, and uh, yeah, on the rink until dinner. Then after dinner, back on the rink. Like I did the same. Uh, my old man made a rink for me and I was out there nonstop. And um, yeah. it's like the people that wonder why their kid isn't developing, why they're not getting better. And it's like, well, how much do they actually practice? Like how much do they yeah. actually want it? Not the parent. How much do, does the kid go out there and just want to do it all the time and love it that much that like, leave me yeah. alone. I'm playing hockey or are they inside playing video games all day? You know, it's like, you yeah, just, I never had a video. I didn't have a video game console till college. I had to buy my own once uh, <laughs> I went to, got to college, and that's when I got one. Uh, well, for speaking of rinks around here, though, is I do have the same player on my squad as two years ago, Brady Collins, who they 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 own some land, you could say, in the area, and the the old man's got a pond for the fields, and um, it is the perfect nice. hockey rink. It is the perfect size for pond hockey. He has a huge shop right beside it where everybody can hang that's not playing. It is the perfect setup, and we did have two of the most epic minor hockey days I've ever been a part of. The kids had fun. I built trophies. We had a tournament, and the parents got in one. Good stuff. I hope uh, I hope you didn't take it easy on any of the kids. That's, that's I was the I referee. Learned. I let the kids play that time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I was the See, ref. My, and I my, old sure man, yeah. my old man was a dad who would back check on me. Um <laughs> And steal the puck on a breakaway until <laughs> until he couldn't steal it anymore because I was better than him. But I'd be uh, five, six, seven, eight years old, and he'd come and stick lift me and shove me off the puck and go I, down the other end. <laughs> well, when uh, when we needed to have a fun practice um, and get the boys cheered up again after that devastating loss, um, I did shave my head. But what else we did was we scrimmaged, played a four on four game. Yeah. The coaches participated. And um, I let them know I still had it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Scored 28 goals that day. <laughs> I did end the game going short side bar down, you know? <laughs> Not a big deal. I let them hang around for a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but isn't it d interesting? Because you did, let, we, we, don't, we don't have that much longer here because I better get back to the real world. But isn't it different, uh, the different life you can live in each league in Europe, but also in the East Coast and AHL lifestyle? Like in minor pro hockey, there is a lot of different lifestyles you can get out of the game based on where you sign up to play that year. Absolutely, man. I mean, I've, I mean I'm mean, i probably the perfect person to ask that question because I've played on – I, I tried to know what I'm talking about like... in my shed, you know? 
<laughs> and like it's my my first year I was a yo-yo guy just going up and down between Chicago and and uh, Kansas City where I probably spent probably spent like 40 50 hours just driving back and forth between those places I was called up and sent down like eight times probably um and then you know second year I stay in the same spot the whole time uh my third year in North America I was on three different teams one was where I had winter and then I went to California for three months and there's no winter there obviously um and then got back smacked in the face in the cold um in Grand well, Rapids and, and on the other Plato. side of that though is like you're a guy like me that kind of came from smaller town Ontario right and then you oh, go yeah. four, you go to four years at Clarkson and you you've been on a team your whole life it's been a team and then all of a sudden you're part of an organization and like it's not the AHL isn't really a team. It, you're part of an organization, oh, no. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You're, you're competing against every single guy in the room in the AHL. Like it's yeah. just, and some of them really don't want to be your friends. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. It's you're, you're taking someone's spot if you're playing. So it's, uh, it's definitely more doggy dog. And then over here, I mean, being in some countries is definitely more, more loving than others. I mean, being a, a, big old ginger just walking around in Czech and Slovakia. Like I stuck out like a sore thumb kind of people just looked at me like, you're not from here. Like don't speak the language. Um, that was tough. And then, you know, you get the countries like Denmark and then the UK where it's like Denmark. So, I mean, you live there. It's just the happiest country in the world. Like really good year for me for hockey there, just to kind of fall back in love with the game and just kind of be a little bit less of a, like, downer guy almost you know because everybody just enjoys life there and like just takes it easy living on a lake um and then obviously here being able to speak the language and it's just you know you you definitely you you get some life experience you get you get some ideas of cultures uh you understand why different things happen in different places why different people are the way they are and it just kind of helps you kind of mold the way that you are and see the world from different angles it's it's really kind of invaluable life experiences i yeah couldn't agree more with your answer yeah. um and uh you know i would agree with the my year in denmark um i uh i think i had gotten a bit complacent in the second league in germany i thought you know i was having good years each year but you know um i wasn't I wasn't trying to go anywhere else. I wasn't trying to go higher. I wasn't trying to go to any other leagues. And I kind of lost the extra oomph drive of like to be the actual best in the league. And um, then when I didn't get a contract in Germany and I needed a new job and I didn't know where I was going to go or what I was going to do. And then Dan Seaman, the guy I mentioned that takes a chance on me as one of his first signings as a head coach. And I don't know the guy and I go there and he puts me with Corey Quirk. We're running a muck. We're having a time. We're winning all the games. We're in first place all year. And it brought back my love of hockey. And then we win the whole thing. And I did want to go back because I, I had had a great year and we had won a championship and I was sick of moving around and I wanted to find a steady place. And then I win a championship and a week later, they tell me they don't want me back <laughs> or they're, t they're going a different direction. And this is before I even fly home. And then all of a sudden the taste of my mouth is totally different from the whole year and winning that championship. Um, it, and then, you know, it, it, well, for me, it was going to Cardiff and um, just having fun again and just playing to play. And I knew I was near the end. That's what brought back the real love of hockey for me. And it, it made me decide yeah. I was just going to be myself and I didn't care anymore what people thought of me, you know? Yeah, it's very similar to me, actually, man. Like, I, I had a very good time in Denmark last year. Um, and I, I didn't – I mean, I signed pretty quick in Sheffield, but I didn't get offered another contract in Hernan, which I was kind of shocked. Um, the coaches – the coaches that – I mean, we didn't get this at all, but we fired our two coaches after winning one cup and losing in the finals in the other. Didn't, didn't renew the coaches' um, contract, so that was a little bit – I've still me. I mean, been coach, trying to figure that one out. Um, no idea, man. The coaches like really liked me, um, but then well, and you want to build a culture on this. a team, right? Like you want to build yeah. um, what what um, your brand, what your team is, and like it can take yeah. a coach time. But like for me, 
Like it'd be the same as when I don't get asked back in Sunder Yuski. I finished second in the league in scoring. We win the championship and I'm not asked back. That guy wins the Pokal and goes to the final and he's not asked back. I'd be steaming mad. <laughs> oh man, it, it didn't it didn't make sense. So when I heard that, it was kind of like okay, weird. And I guess they, I guess they kind of already knew who they were bringing in before the end of the year, kind of thing, which was interesting. But I guess Especially the coach is there now. Them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the coach that's there now, I guess his kid is an agent. So he kind of came with like, uh, hey, like I'll be the coach and we'll bring in this guy, this guy, and this guy, kind of thing. Where like. I don't know. It didn't, it didn't make too much sense to me, but you know, everything happens for a reason and I'm, I couldn't be happier where I am now. So, I mean, you know, and it's the same as when things. I got to Cardiff, man, the same, you know, same thing happens. And then you go somewhere, you start winning games and you're playing with dandies and you're having fun again. And the fans treat you like they have been and you, yeah. you, you, you love the game again. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, well, I'm glad you're happy there. Um, and I could tell you are because um, I think you're a gamer and I think you enjoy mucking it up. And I think the UK league is way more up your alley than Denmark because oh, yeah. I'm not yeah. trying to be mean, but like, I thought they mucked it up the least of any league I played in. Well, I just, I don't know. I, I'm a big believer in fighting in hockey just because like, <laughs> it's, you know, like it's, a, I, you know, the game happens so fast, and especially with the quality of refing in some of these leagues, um, like a two-minute penalty just doesn't do it for me for sometimes. Like the the guy who elbowed me in the face kind of thing where I got I missed two games kind of thing because I had a concussion is just kind of like, that's a guy who I would like to come back the next, next game I'm back and be like, hey, you're going to answer for this now. Like two-minute penalty for you wasn't enough in my books kind of thing. And you can't do that there. It, like I think like a, a fight <laughs> Denmark one game suspension, um, which oh, is like yeah. out of the game and you're suspended the next game. So it's like, and then the my, team's gonna like get here, mad you know, it's, the it's, team will get mad at you if you're an import exactly. and you're getting yeah, suspended. Exactly. It's the same in the second league in Germany. You couldn't yeah. fight. And I agree that it's important. Um, the yeah. other part of it is like these leagues now, I, I personally don't think it's the hockey people making these calls. No, they're not the guys like us that are shed guys that want the teams to figure it out. It's like, so if a guy knees someone or elbows the guy in the face and he gets suspended for two games and there's this big video review and you send it to all the fans saying, this is what we're doing to clean up the game. It's like, well, actually that doesn't help the team that happened to at all because that player, in my opinion, the times I got blown up or somebody did something dirty, the times I had a guy have my back and go over and fight the guy immediately is like, yeah. I know you have my back. And that means a lot yeah. for the rest of the season. And that means a lot for a team. And if you just let the guy get suspended for two games and nobody does nothing about nothing, guess what? That guy misses two games against other teams. It still doesn't, doesn't help think twice team about at all. It. No, and he'll do yeah, it again. He doesn't think twice about doing it again next game. Yeah. And they'll just, do it to your you team know, and they'll push your team around. a two-day vacation. Yeah. yeah. Drives me nuts. Yeah, I um, I, you have to fight page. to have each other's backs to become a team. Um. I personally think teams need to go out and drink beers and they need to fight. <laughs> I'm old school, yeah, I guess. <laughs> absolutely. Couldn't agree more. It's, you know, it's and that's a how good way of building. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. What do I know, right? Anyways, <laughs> I think it was when those kids were coming in, I was talking. They don't, I don't think they know. But like, yeah, th this minor hockey organization that like has a lot of history. Um, and I mean, I have a lot of the swag and my kids have a lot of swag and like every Christmas ornament is concurred and Canucks to think that this isn't going to exist after this year is very sad. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wild. Um, but I guess uh, we better make this last season memorable then, right? Guess so. Yeah. May as well, may as well win a cup. May as well. Winning's fun. Winning is fun. You know that. <laughs> um, okay. Last question. What's the worst and best barns in the EIHL? Just to piss some people off, tell me the worst one. <laughs> you Manchester. Say, you shut your <laughs> fuck. Yeah, you're saying that just because they throw chocolate if they win and they have so much I'm, fun. <laughs> I'm not, man. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know because they haven't beaten us this year. So. Zip it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Zip it. I, I'm I a sponsor just... of the team. Have you seen the back of the captain's jersey? And have you gained while you're yeah. playing hockey? <laughs> I, I have seen it. Yeah. No. I mean, like. They're, they're a team that competes and like it's nothing against the team itself it's just like 
that rink, man. Like the away team's locker room, you walk in there and the floor is soaking wet. There's mold all over the ceiling. The showers don't work. The toilets don't flush. The rink is the size of a three-on-three rink. Um, the it's, boards stick out. There's it's like beautiful. The, oh, it's it's like yeah. I don't know. It, that that is my the only thing that's good about that rink for me is it's close, but. Um, <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> for me, that's is. I I did go there often. I think it's neat how they support me. They throw chocolate the ice the time I went there. Um, like it's I, a cool. It gets loud in there. I will say that. Like that's a cool atmosphere for that. But just like the actual playing surface is so small. So small. And like I thought you like, liked that because you're big. Because I I grew up on a rink that small. And by I mean, the time I, I mind, was playing I don't there, mind it, but. I couldn't get around on like, those big ice, man. You're big ice. Like, you must be able to skate with your long legs, man. My little legs, how far you'd have to yeah, go yeah. to <laughs> four check? Yes. Puke. It's mostly just like it's mostly just the like getting there and sitting in a wet, moldy <laughs> locker room and like there's nowhere to warm up. Like just that is just like it's uh, it's cold. It's yeah, it's <laughs> that, that's that's the worst. Well, they told me. me I could have a pop up stand there, so that's neat. <laughs> no, there um, you go. Well. <laughs> but the time I went there as a pregame speaker, when you talk about the moldy locker room and wet, um, <laughs> like you know, you get the two rooms together. That second one, <laughs> yeah. I sat in that toilet naked, and we locked the door. And the equipment guy says that there was something wrong with the toilet, so they locked the door so nobody uses it. And I sat in there on that shitter the whole time. Well, I went in during warm-ups and started sitting there with a beer with an axe, sword, and a shield to be a Viking as the pregame speaker. <laughs> and then they broke the glass and warm-up. And they come in, and now the do- bathroom door is locked, and they can't use it. And it took, like, I don't know how long to fix this glass, man. And then they had to go back out to warm up again. I sat in that shitter naked, cold and afraid for like an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and my beer was gone within the first 10 minutes. And I just sat there listening to them all talk in the locker room. <laughs> uh, so I have been to that arena before and it's beautiful. <laughs> Great memories. Uh, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely a barn. It's a barn. So what's your favorite? You can't say Sheffield. Well, it, it is Sheffield. I'll just put that on the yeah, record, y'all, but, yeah, um, yeah. Say it for the fans, everything. That ice surface is way too big. Can't even body I check. Love, I love it. Um, I don't know. I think, I mean, Belfast is cool just for modern reasons. It's like you know, you go in the locker room is huge. Like it's a modern rink, um, but nothing too special about it, I guess, in terms of that. But, um. I actually don't mind like some of the older like Fife is cool, yeah, but yeah, it's it also sucks at the same time. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, like just like the, the the rink is cool and like the the history behind it is cool. Um, I like that rink. I think that rink's hot. Yeah, the, that is. Yeah, I I would probably say there. It just sucks that it's five and a half hours to get there. And, and it matters like if a place has a good two touch area, right? Two touch areas are a big deal. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, very if, very big deal. I don't Again, know who Manchester, listens to me no in my shed, area. right? Yeah, it's like whoever's listening to me in my shed. There's a barn around here that um they put in around the concourse up top a mini hockey rink. So like oh, you know, they're gonna say no no two touch. I was gonna say no, like that. That so when their siblings are playing, they got a little little tiny barn with glass nets. And like the siblings can be playing mini hockey while they're out on the other teams or kids are playing, man. It was so cool. And the other thing is though, if you're building these new barns and you know, I don't think they have much soul, but if you, if you make a nice little two touch area for the fellas, you know, they'll yep. appreciate it's it. It's gotta be. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it's a big, a, big it's part a, of the game. game warm up every game. Yeah. yeah. How else are you going to warm up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jumping around. <laughs> plyometrics no way <laughs> come on ah uh, that's good stuff okay well i don't think i have anything else other than uh i do have more small world stuff but we can do that another time um I, I, i'm uh i've been impressed with your team uh i've been impressed with your play and uh you know you have been doing it for a lot of years and to have the spirit and the fight that you're showing and mucking it up like hockey should be um i appreciate that so keep up the good work and keep throwing pucks to kids that's cool stuff you know every game man every game that's that's hockey and uh yeah 
And this has been another episode of Tales of Hockey Tales with Pamsey and Wally.